ladies and gentlemen, Ralph Echemendia. You have already been hacked. Yes, every single one of you, before you woke up this morning, you were already hacked. See, we, we live in a hybrid reality. No longer can you say that the opposite of virtual means physical. Um, our physical world is almost entirely driven by our virtuality, our information, our data. Uh, in fact, our individual identity is defined by data. My name is Ralph Achimendia, and I grew up right here in Miami. Uh, now I'm internationally known as the ethical hacker, and for over 30 years I have been a technologist, a cybersecurity expert, a business executive, an entrepreneur, and yes, a hacker. Uh, when I, specifically in the last 15 years, I, I decided to focus on individual privacy and what's called data protection. Um, when I tell people what I've done and what I do, I almost always get some interesting questions. Uh, typically they are, can you hack my boyfriend or girlfriend? <laughs> um, can you hack an Instagram account? Can you hack my taxes? Uh, and while technically that may be possible, the answer is no, uh, because that would be unethical and illegal. Uh, but almost always, I get asked, what is a hacker, and how do I keep myself from getting hacked? Um, we are all constantly uh, being bombarded with news of hacking, but hacking is not a crime. It's actually a skill. Uh, but with the news, the type of coverage we get uses words like cyber warfare and viruses and ransomware, and the list of scary terms goes on and on. So much so that I would say that most of us have what I call hacking fatigue. Now, I am sure that you have seen a movie or two uh, with guys who look like this. <laughs> I, I hope that's not me, but um, <laughs> this, this is not a hacker. Now, we are constantly, uh, or usually, anyway, uh, presented this way. We are wearing um, masks and hoodies, which are not necessary if you're in front of a computer, by the way. <laughs> and um, again, this is uh, the way we're perceived, right? But one definition, one dictionary definition defines the term hacker as a person who uses a computer to gain unauthorized access to data. And under that definition, you have already been hacked. Uh, because the moment you started using technology, there is undoubtedly use of your data, that data that makes you you, that defines who you are, that is your identity. It's, that data is already in use in ways that you did not authorize. Even if you happen to approve the terms and conditions on that app and website, which no one really reads. Um, you have no idea how that data is actually being used, nor do you really understand what you agreed to. But why? Why? Why should you care? Well, our lives are so intertwined with technology that we can't even operate in the physical world without it. And that's why we should all care, because it affects you. It affects you in ways that you may not even realize. Uh, that data, that data, that data defines behavior. And behavior defines our individual and our collective identities. Identity defines reputation. Meaning that our use of technology may have a positive or negative impact on you, personally. Now in business or any kind of personal matters, uh, our reputation drives our relationships. Privacy is an illusion. You cannot expect privacy when you're in public. And you are, in fact, in public. You are public. All technology that we use today, everything that you guys are using on your phones, is in fact a publicly available service. Very much like a park or a library. 
So let's get back to hacker for a moment here. This term, hacker. There are different types of hackers, right? Now, how you, the important thing here, I want you to think about that term hacker, is how do you become the hacker and not the hacked, right? Uh, there's a lot of different types of hackers. Uh, we have, let's see, we still probably see an illusion. Here's some, some of the hackers. Um, we use terms in our industry like black hats and white hats and green hats and gray hats, but those terms have more to do with intent, with the motivation behind a person. Um, the legal versus illegal activities taken by a group or individual. But really, the characteristics that make a person the hacker type, uh, these are the sort of things we, most of us have. Number one, the ability to learn, a thirst for knowledge. And if you note up here, on one side, another meaning is an expert at, problem, at programming and solving problems, but yet also a person who engages in an activity without skill or talent. Like that's kind of a contradiction, right? Like contradicting meanings. But it's that activity, it's, it's the people who types who do, with or without knowing what they're doing, the ones who do, uh, doing leads to expertise. It leads ultimately to the knowledge and the skill sets for anyone to be effective at achieving a goal, the hack. So you don't need permission or authorization from anyone to know or to learn. And learning to learn is what hackers do oh so well. The truth is that, uh, you know, you think I'm telling you that you're now supposed to become a hacker or be a cybersecurity expert? just so you can protect yourself? No, because the truth is, is that we don't really care about cybersecurity. That's what I've learned in all these years. Uh, what we care about is safety. And security is a component of safety, but there are other components like availability, trust, and privacy. What we really care about is safety. When you go out to a club out here, uh, or you go to an event, a venue for an event, such as this, you have to go through security. And even though the guys here were not this way, usually it's an intimidating person wearing a black shirt that says security on it. That's the last person we want to have to deal with when we're going to go party, right? So, but if that person was wearing a light blue shirt and it said safety on it, you'd be more likely to want to come up to them and communicate with them, ask them questions, right? Hackers are innovators in safety, both the good and the bad actors, because we love innovation. Talked about innovation. Innovation has changed the way we live, and it's created massively lucrative industries, right? And everything from energy to finance, and provided all kinds of considerable conveniences whose global impact are undeniable. In fact, in the 20th century alone, Innovations such as radio, television, uh, radar, air conditioning, kind of important here in Miami. Um, the, of course, computers and the internet, right? We love innovation because innovation creates opportunity. Opportunity fuels economy. And along with these opportunities, opportunity of any kind, any kind, all opportunities produce risks. Right? So, risks can be exploited. In cybersecurity, exploiting risks creates innovation, creating new opportunities. And this is the circle of innovation. Insecurity, producing security. Now, these risks, we hackers call vulnerabilities. And there are technically, there are hundreds of vulnerabilities in the technologies that we use today. They neither all have or have had some sort of vulnerability. How many of us in this room, see a show of hands, has had your computer or your cell phone crash? Okay. Well, that's almost everybody, right? Um, even I recently had one of these issues. I had a, an external drive that I use 
And this, this drive is very important because it keeps a lot of important information, critical data that I use for different things, uh, personal information, pictures, of course, um, and even I, the ethical hacker, I don't, I don't have access to the type of hardware necessary to be able to do data recovery. I, I had to take it to a data recovery company so that I can potentially get my information back. Vulnerability. Even I am vulnerable. I have to put my trust in someone else to be able to get that information back, right? Vulnerability creates trust. Well, that sounds crazy, but it does. Vulnerability creates trust. So who do you trust in technology? Who do you trust when it comes to privacy? <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> trust yourself. Um, privacy goes hand in hand with trust, right? Uh, and a lot of people, I've, I've had this conversation where people say, I, I don't care about privacy because I have nothing to hide. And if you think you have nothing to hide, then that in itself is your biggest vulnerability because you will be exposed in ways that you couldn't imagine today. And when you are, oh, you're going to care, I assure you. Our ability to create privacy or prevent that privacy from being used as a vulnerability really comes through learning, through understanding, and doing something with that knowledge. Uh, as I mentioned before, hackers are really good at learning how to learn very quickly and very deeply about a subject matter, about a company, about a technology, about a person, um, or you know, any sort of thing. They're really good at knowing how to do this. But with all the resources that we have online today, there is no reason, there is no reason why you can't do this, all the same things. I could say that everybody in this room is the smartest person in the room, with one word, Google, okay? There is no silver bullet for this issue of privacy. There is no single solution. This really isn't about just installing an antivirus or using a VPN. You have to actually learn how to reduce your risks, digital or otherwise. And that's the only way that you can define your privacy. So privacy is something personal. Only you can define it, and only you can then create it. So with that said, be the hacker and not the hacked. I'm going to leave you with a few lines of hacker code that are the best, I think. Um, it's what I consider to be the most powerful and best possible communicator, and it is the universal language of music. I'm going to introduce you to my daughter, Hennessy, and her song, Privacy. <laughs> Would you share your thoughts with me? Unfiltered and raw, baby Most definitely ugly, would you, sweetie? Would you share your thoughts with me? Unfiltered and raw, baby Most definitely ugly, would you, sweetie? Should you be able to see All the dirty aspects of me Even the ones I have yet to see Should you be able to see All the dirty aspects of me Even the ones I have yet to see Privacy, where have you gone? Privacy, what do you mean? Privacy, what you thought of? Cause I don't see any, 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 any privacy. Privacy. Nothing to hide 
mind So then I guess you wouldn't mind If I let myself inside So you say that you got nothing to hide So then I guess you wouldn't mind If I let myself inside Privacy, where have you gone? Privacy, what do you mean? Privacy, what you thought of? Cause I don't see any, 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 any privacy. Privacy. Get some privacy.